You have the new Mortal Kombat game, don't you? Yes, I do. Who's your main? Well, it's got to be Shao Kahn, man, because every move that man does looks like a fatality. Mortal Kombat is a series known for its comedic ultraviolence and surprisingly deep world building, which has led to a phrase coined by fans which is, you come for the gore, stay for the law. Speaking of law, did you know that the character of Johnny Cage originally was going to be Jean-Claude Van Damme? So what does Jean-Claude Van Damme got to do with uh, Mortal Kombat? Well, a lot in fact, and he is indirectly responsible for the entire fucking series because originally Mortal Kombat was going to be a Jean-Claude Van Damme vehicle. So it was supposed to be a Jean-Claude Van Damme action game, and then later it was going to be a combat game with him playing the titular character. And the story behind it is apparently the producers of Universal Soldier were like, you know what is really hot right now? Those fucking video game things all the kids are playing. Let's put Jean-Claude Van Damme in a video game. And they approached Midway Games and they went, would you make a Jean-Claude Van Damme action game? They went, uh, yeah that sounds baller as fuck, we'll get right on it. And they set about digitizing Jean-Claude Van Damme and they put him into like a basic level where he's running around kicking people to show Jean-Claude Van Damme himself to sell him on the idea. And apparently the deal just fell through because uh, apparently Jean-Claude Van Damme did not want to be in a video game kicking the shit out of people. And as I'm saying, I expect in the background, just panning across, is the greatest title piece of media in history, which is Street Fighter the movie, the video game. <laughs> Which is so pointless, because Jean-Claude Van Damme, he's Guile in Street Fighter the movie. All-American action guy, Guile. You have made me a happy man. Next, I'll make you a dead one. Yeah! Like, Capcom insisted on hiring Jean-Claude, even though he's, like, Belgian. And when it was pointed out, I'm like, you know he's not American, right? We don't care. Put him in the movie. <laughs> and to be fair, to be fair, he did do a flash kick. There's a great story about like the behind the scenes making of that video game because all the actors who appeared in it were contractually obligated to appear in the video game as well. And the only one who didn't was, uh, I think, the guy who played T-Hawk and Raul Julia, who was dead when they made the game. So they brought his um, body double in and put him in instead. But the story about like the guy who played T-Hawk is he just left. <laughs> And they came into film, like, you need to come in and do all your shoot, like, the, the shooting for the video game. He just wasn't in his trailer, it was cleared out, so they couldn't put him in and no one could find him. And apparently the shoot was just a huge party and everyone was getting drunk and doing drugs. And Jean-Claude Van Damme's like, yeah, uh, do you know, I, I, I slept with Kylie Minogue during that shoot, you know? Yeah, I hit that. <laughs> which I, which I, I don't know whether to believe it or not, because as far as I'm aware, Kylie Minogue has never confirmed whether or not she did sleep with Jean-Claude Van Damme, but like Van Damme's like, yeah, I, I, I hit that. I think he does the splits in the bedroom. So like, that's his move, innit? So like, that is like the, the move, innit, that Jean-Claude Van Damme does. So Jean-Claude Van Damme didn't want anything to do with this fighting game? No, but Midway kind of liked the idea of like, you know, a combat game with featuring digitized actors. And what they did is they retooled the idea to become Mortal Kombat. And, um, there's a great story about behind Mortal Kombat. Apparently, um, they were just going to originally call it Combat with a K because they thought it looked cooler. And prior to that, when Van Damme was involved, you know what the name of the game was? Um, Van Damme. After Van Damme didn't want anything to do with the project, uh, they took away the name Van Damme. And I think they originally were like Kumite was one of the names or Dragon Fighter was another one. And they settled on Combat with a K and then put the Mortal in front of it and they went, well, the rest is history. Mortal fucking Combat. And I think one of my favourite long-running just things in gaming is the fact that in Mortal Kombat, every single fucking thing with a C is always spelled with a K, to the point where when you're playing the game, character select is with a K, continue is with a K, everything is with a K, and it's so, uh, it annoyed me until I realised they'd fully committed to the gimmick, and when I, when I clicked on it, it says, continue with a K, I went, you know what? I'm not even mad at this point. You've stuck to it. You've committed. I'm happy with that. Do you know what I mentioned at the beginning? Like Mortal Kombat has like you know surprisingly deep lore and world building. Like I'm not fucking kidding. So do you have your, do you know the backstory to why Johnny Cage has superpowers? Because Johnny Cage, like he can do. He's got the green energy. They actually call it just green energy in the game, and he can like you know do the shadow kick and the shadow ball. Like, and the explanation for that is Johnny Cage is inexplicably a descendant of a warrior race 
that was bred specifically to fight for the amusement of the gods in the Mortal Kombat universe, and they had this mysterious green energy, and Johnny Cage can use that now. Isn't that weird? Isn't that fucking cool? I mean... Oh no, I love it. I, I, I love all, like, all the, the backstories in Mortal Kombat are amazing. Like, like Sub-Zero, like my main man. I fucking love the idea of that. Um, Sub-Zero in the games is the second Sub-Zero, and his brother died and become Noob Sabot. A Noob Cybot in the new game is just like the roast master extraordinaire. There are like super cuts out there. All he does is just annihilate people in the pre-match banter. Like, I think Shao Kahn's like, oh, join me and conquer realms, and Noob Cybot's like, name one realm you control. It's like, it's so bad. Like, have you seen some of the interactions in that game? They're amazing. Uh, you've shown me a few. Like, every character in the game has half an hour of unique interactions with every other character in the game, including themselves. And they have multiple ones. And they're all hilarious. Like, Johnny Cage, um, I think he fights Garrus, like, a man who can like, control time and has lived like, basically since the dawn of existence. And he, he says to Johnny Cage, like, actors leave no mark on history. Do you know what Johnny Cage's like, response to that is? What? Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Which means that Ronald Reagan exists. He was an Earthrealm president. It's like, that's so fucking good. I think it's like Kung Lao as well. Like, the guy with the weird, like, the hat. All he ever talks about is his hat. He's, all he knows his personality is based on that hat. Uh, one hat man to another. Cool hat. But your hat is no weapon. Well, that's just weird, Kung Lao. So Jean-Claude Van Damme didn't want to be in the game? No, but he's still technically in the game because um, they decided after, like, you know, they went, okay, we're going to make an, a fighting game featuring digitized actors. Fuck it, we're putting Jean-Claude Van, Van Damme in anyway. And they made a character called Johnny Cage. And Johnny Cage, as likeness and moveset, is based on that of Jean-Claude Van Damme. And as if they weren't, like, you know, happy with like, jacking Van Damme's likeness, they establish in the story that Johnny Cage is an egocentric dickhead actor who uh, only joins the Mortal Kombat tournament to prove that he's, like, a good martial artist and it's not all done with, like, stunt guys and all that crap. <laughs> the unnecessary dunking of Jean-Claude Van Damme. You know what? I don't want to work on this project. Okay, we're going to pay homage to you in this game by basing the biggest dickhead character in it on you. They even went as far as like Johnny Cage's original costume in Mortal Kombat 1 is the costume that Jean-Claude Van Damme wears in Bloodsport, like the, um, the black trousers with the red sash. And then they gave him the split punch, the package check, like the best move in the game is based on something that Jean-Claude Van Damme doesn't want to do. He just does the splits and punches the guy in the nuts. This is the move. This is the one that like, Johnny Cage has to fucking do this. And it's the singular most effective move in the world because it, like, it even works on Goro. Like, even Goro, like the forearm Shokan Prince, like undefeated in combat for like 5,000 years or some shit. Even he is susceptible to a good old punch in the balls. You'd think one arm would protect his nuts, no, wouldn't you? No, straight in the nose. And they put it in the movie, which is fantastic. Like, the Mortal Kombat movie where just Johnny Cage punches Goro in the nuts. It's brilliant. Can we just for a moment talk about how bad that movie is? Because for years, like, they never acknowledged it in any way in Mortal Kombat canon, except for like one throwaway line in Mortal Kombat X like 15 years later. And then, for the marketing for Mortal Kombat 11, the final trailer they did, they played the song. You know, the song they've never used in any piece of media ever since that film came out. They played it for the trailer and it's like, you know what? You just sold a game. The fact you will have the balls to put that shitty piece of techno crap in your trailer for your like $300 million game, you've got me. That's awesome. Also, it's going to have Terminator in it. I'm assuming that's tying with the new film. Maybe, but it's, 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 it's going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger as well. Yeah. It's the T-800. Oh, it's going to be great. And do you know people are annoyed about that? People are like, oh, what's with all these stupid guest characters in my Mortal Kombat game? Oh, bring back Reptile. Oh, and to always, like, I can't imagine how boring your life must be if you see, oh, they're going to put the Terminator in Mortal Kombat and let you beat it up. And people are like, oh, but I want to play as another ninja. Ugh. Oh, they're putting Nightwolf in the game. Ugh. 
<laughs> Why? Where's Reptile? So, oh, man, I love Reptile. I don't give a shit. The T800. I love it. And then apparently the rumor was going to be they were going to put Pennywise in it. Oh. But there's a, a like, apparently a deal fell through at the last minute, and now it might be the Joker, which is less fun. But Pennywise was going to be in that game, and I'm so salt that he's not. Because the, we could have Pennywise versus the fucking Terminator, which would have been awesome. I want them to put all the guest characters they've ever done into its own game. Because I want the Terminator to fight the Predator with backup from Freddy Krueger with like Leatherface in the background. Oh. Since we're talking about Mortal Kombat today, um, Mortal Kombat was famous for like basically dominating arcades back in the day. Because it, um, there's a thing, have you ever heard about the loudness war between... Um, arcade cabinets back in the day. So basically, back then, arcades were fucking loud. So if you wanted your game to stand, your new game to stand out, just make it louder than everybody else. And Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2 were um, famous or infamous, I should say, for like, having the loudest cabinet going. Apparently, to compete with that, the, the Street Fighter, the movie, the video game, had an arcade release that <laughs> every time you put a quarter in or a coin, it would just go. I am not kidding. You can put it in. I think it was like the, the best friends played it and they and they just keep mashing the button as hard as they can. It's every time you put a coin in, it just goes, Whoa! and it just makes like this weird like sex thrust noise for no reason. <laughs> so that's the fucking coin sound. Oh, yeah. Keep putting coins in. Don't stop. Supposedly to compete with Mortal Kombat. Because, like, nothing's louder than Mortal Kombat. That thing was so loud. That was like an, a jetliner taking off in your earlobes, man. That thing was amazing. So, do you have a particular favourite obnoxious sound effect from a video game? Because I am all on board with these. All well, on. The ones I love are the ones that are really specific and you do more than once. Okay. Like, uh, in Overwatch, when, I, when I've got Lucio, the voice line I always do is, now that's how you get tinnitus, and just say it over and over again. <laughs> it's like in Rocket League, and it? What a save. That should have a sound effect. Because that, to me, is the greatest most annoying thing you can do because he's so passive aggressive. Every time you score a goal, you don't scream down the microphone, you don't celebrate like a jackass, you just press right and you send what save. And it comes up really small in the bottom corner, but I know so many people who get so salt about that. When they see that, they get into a blind raid. And that to me is even funnier because you're not doing anything with what save. Because what I think when I used to play um, For Honor, in that game, it's got similar things. They can send people like um, little emotes, and one of them is good fight. So what I always do is throw people off the edge of the level, sp um, um, spam the taunt button while walking forward so it replays the animation, which I played as think the one who just did the crotch thrust. So my guy's just crotch thrusting towards them, and it just says good fight, good fight, good fight. <laughs> Back in the day, I played a lot of Rainbow Six Vegas with a mate of mine. And one day his parents were out, so we got to play on the big TV and he put the volume all the way up. And we're like, oh man, this is really loud. But in that game, like, sounds contextual. So what he did is he put a shotgun next to my character model's head and pulled the trigger when the TV was on full. <laughs> and I'm not kidding when I say the next door neighbor's dog shit itself. Because <laughs> that shotgun blast was so loud. Now, Carl, that's how you get tinnitus. <laughs> <laughs> we were just so good because I remember we were playing that game and we always put on where you could shoot each other. And whenever I asked for help, my mate would go, I'm sorry, Carl, you're too injured. I can't help you. And he'd just pull out a Desert Eagle and just shoot me. The mercy killing. He's like, quick, help me up so I can help you. And he goes, no, Carl, you're too injured. And he'd just shoot me. 